Welcome back to Physical Science 101. In our last lesson, we talked all about electrical current. In this lesson, we're going to talk about electrical power and alternating current. So let's start with electrical power. We're actually going to derive our own equation for our electrical power. We're going to do this from some equations that you are already familiar with. The first equation is that work, the work done on a charge, is equal to the change in its potential energy, assuming that its kinetic energy doesn't change, that the speed of the charge is constant. So that's our first equation. Work is equal to change in potential energy. The second equation is we're going to use our equation for power. Power is work done divided by time. So that's another equation that you should be familiar with from an earlier unit. So power is work done divided by time, and work is equal to the change in potential energy. When we bring those two equations together, power is equal to change in potential energy divided by time. Now I can use my expression for electrical potential energy to substitute in for potential energy with charge times voltage. So power is also equal to charge times change in voltage over change in time. I can rearrange this equation to give me that power is charge divided by time times change in voltage. And then charge over time is current. So we have our final equation, and this is the very useful equation for electrical power that says that electric power is equal to electric current times change in voltage. So electrical power is equal to electrical current times change in voltage. So we have not introduced anything new here. This is all stuff that we've already covered. We've just brought it together in a way to discover that electrical power must equal electrical current times change in voltage. Now this is a very useful equation when you look at the appliances in your house. So let's do a couple of examples. Here's our first question. An automobile starter rated at two horsepower. Now two horsepower is 1,500 watts. I've already done the conversion for you. So an automobile starter rated at 1,500 watts draws how many amps from a 12 volt battery? So we know the voltage of your automobile battery. We know the power that the starter has to put out in order to start your motor of your car. And the question is, how many amperes will be drawn from that battery? How many amperes does that battery have to be able to supply? So that's another rating on your battery is how many amperes it can deliver. If you look at your car battery, if you buy a car battery, you'll notice all of these different ratings on the battery. It's voltage, it's current, and it's capacity. So for now, the question is, to operate a 1,500 watt starter, how many amperes are drawn from a 12 volt battery? I would like you to work this out, pause, work it out, and then when you're ready to see me work it out, hit play again. Okay, our expression for electric power is that power is equal to current times voltage. We were told that the voltage is 12 volts and that the power is 1,500 watts. So we have 1,500 watts is equal to the current times 12 volts. We're looking for current, so I'll divide by 12 volts. That cancels out my 12 volts, and I have current by itself over here. And over here, I have 1,500 divided by 12. 
and that's 125. And I have watts and volts. Well, that must give us a unit of ampere. Since this is our basic metric unit of power, our basic metric unit of voltage, it must give us our basic metric unit of current, which would be an ampere. So that battery has to be capable of putting out 125 amperes, at least for that short period of time while you're starting your car engine. Okay, here's another question. A small radio operates on three volts and has a resistance of 15 ohms. What is the power of this radio? Okay, think about it. We know that power is current times voltage, but we're not given current, but you can figure it out. So I'd like you to think about that, pause, figure it out, work it out, and then when you have an answer and you're ready to see me work through this, hit play again. Okay, we have a battery. The radio operates on a battery, which is a three volt battery. And it goes through the other parts of the radio. I'm just gonna do like that. That's the rest of the radio. And what we're told is that the resistance is 15 ohms. And we're looking for the power of this radio. And we know that power is equal to current times change in voltage. We don't know the current, though. We, know, we want to know the power. We know the voltage. We don't know the current. Well, for the current, we can use... Ohm's law. We can figure out the current that flows through the radio because we know the voltage and the resistance. So power in place of current, I can write in change in voltage over resistance and then times change in voltage. So now I have everything I need. Power is three volts times three volts divided by 15 ohms. So power is three times three divided by 15. That gives me a number of 0 0.6. And volts divided by ohms, that gives me an ampere. Amperes times volts, that gives me watts. So my power of this radio is 0 0.6 watts. Okay, here's another question on electric power, and this will be the last one like this. A 15 ohm toaster is turned on in a circuit that already has a 150 watt motor, three 100 watt light bulbs, and a 600 watt electric iron that are on. And the question is, will this trip a 15 ampere circuit breaker? Okay, remember that this is a parallel circuit and in a parallel circuit, the currents add up. So the question is, what is the current flowing through all of these devices and does that current to total more than 15 amperes? Okay, so now pause, think about that, work on it and when you're ready to see me work through it, hit play again. Okay, so let's draw this out. We have a source with 120 volts and that has wires coming out. This goes to a circuit breaker, which is a 15 ampere circuit breaker. And then that is connected to a lot of devices. We have 
a 15 ohm toaster. And that goes back to the source. We have a 150 watt motor. And that is connected in parallel. We have three 100 watt light bulbs. One, two, and three. And a 600 watt electric iron. All right, and all of those are connected in the same circuit. So let's make sure I got everything. I have my 120 volt source. I have a, a 15 ohm toaster, a 150 watt motor, three 100 watt light bulbs, and a 600 watt electric iron. And the question is, will that trip a 15 ampere circuit breaker? Well, remember that the current flowing through this wire right here is the sum of the currents flowing through all of these. So we have to figure out the current flowing through each of these devices. So for the 15 ohm, uh, what is that, a toaster, we can use Ohm's law. Current is equal to change in voltage over resistance. So the current is 120 volts over 15 ohms. So the current through the toaster, the toaster, yes, is 120 divided by 15. That will draw eight amperes of current. So the toaster by itself will draw eight amperes of current. Now, for the rest of these devices, we don't know their uh, resistance. We know their power. So for that, we'll have to use power is equal to current times voltage, or dividing by voltage, which cancels out voltage. We have power over voltage is equal to current. So, power over voltage is equal to current. So I have 150 watts over 120 volts is my current through the motor. So 150 divided by 120, that is 1.25. is my current for each of the light bulbs. I can do the same thing. Power over voltage is my current, 100 watts divided by 120 volts is my current, 100 divided by 120. That is 0 0.833 amperes is my current and then just as a reminder I have to multiply that by three so I'll put it there there are three uh, light bulbs finally for the electric iron power over voltage is my current 600 watts over 120 volts is my current. 600 divided by 120 is five. Five amperes is my current. So that's how much each of these devices takes, but this circuit breaker has to handle all of them together. So I have to add all of them up. So I have eight amperes plus 1.25 amperes 
plus 0.833 amperes plus 0.833 amperes plus 0.833 amperes because I have three bulbs plus five amperes. Total all of those up and I have eight plus 1.25 plus 0.833 plus 0.833, plus 0.833, plus 5, and I get a total of 16.8, or 16.7, actually 16.7, 16.8 amperes. So that is too much for the circuit breaker, so that circuit breaker will definitely trip. Here's a quick question. If you multiply amps by volts, the answer will be in units of A, resistance, B, work, C, current, D, power. Now please pause, think about it, come down on a definite answer, and once you have a definite answer, please hit play again, and I will talk you through this question and give you the correct answer. Well, let's think about this. Amperes times volts, an amp times a volt is a watt. And so the watts are the units of power. So the correct answer is D, power. If you multiply a quantity in amps by a quantity in volts, that would be current times voltage, and current times voltage is power. So when we multiply the current through something, by the voltage across it, then we get the power of that device. The final lesson of this topic is alternating current and direct current. In the simulations that I showed you, the current flowed in a particular direction from positive to negative. There were little arrows pointing in the direction of the current, then those arrows pointed from the positive side of the battery to the negative side of the battery. So that is called direct current because the current always goes in a particular direction. The alternative to direct current is called alternating current. And in alternating current, the current actually oscillates back and forth in a particular frequency. So if I were to show you a simulation with alternating current, those arrows would point one way and then the other and back and forth at a frequency in the United States, that frequency is, would typically be 60 hertz, or 60 oscillations per second. So 60 times per second, the current would go back and forth. Now, in this case, the, the energy is not carried by the charges themselves going from positive to negative, because they don't. They don't make it from positive to negative, they just go back and forth. So how is the energy carried? The energy is actually carried by waves. If you think about how you're hearing me right now, I'm not blowing air towards you. I'm actually making sound waves. So it's sound waves that go from me to you, not a current of air, a direct current of air going from me to you. The, the sound actually goes through vibrations in the air and any, any any air molecules are only vibrating back and forth. They're not moving from me to you. So the energy of my voice is carried to you by sound waves. Well, the same thing happens in alternating current. The energy is carried down the wires by electric waves, by waves of electricity. Now you might ask, why would we do this? Why do we have, why for example, is our household electricity alternating current, which it is. It's 60 hertz alternating current, typically. Uh, the answer is it didn't have to be. In the early years of electrification of, of the United States, there was a debate over whether we should have alternating current electricity or direct current electricity. 
what won out is alternating current. That's why all of our household electricity is alternating current. Why did it win out? Alternating current won out because of transformers. And transformers only work on alternating current. Here's a picture of a transformer that you might see outside of your house. If you go out and look up on the pole, you might see one of these canisters. It might not be up on a pole. If you live in a more rural area, it might actually be on the ground. Um, but these are transformers. And the rule of a transformer is that power in equals power out. So a transformer is kind of like a simple machine and that a simple machine didn't do any work, didn't increase your work, but it did trade off between force and distance. Well, a transformer is a simple machine that trades off between voltage and current. So the electrical power going into a transformer is equal to the electrical power going out of a transformer, but that can mean a trade off between voltage and current. Power in equals power out gives us the equation that voltage in times current in equals voltage out times current out. So what does this mean? The higher the current, the more power is lost to wires resistance and the, higher the, and the hotter the wires get. The power is transformed for transport to a high voltage. So when the electric company wants to transport electricity, they transport it at a very high voltage. So a high voltage, if voltage times current is a constant, then high voltage means low current. So they will transform, they will transform the voltage of, of the power that they supply to a very high voltage, uh, 100,000 or more volts, so very, very high voltage, but that means that they can transform, that they can transport that electricity at very low current, which means that less uh, energy is lost in the wires for transport. So when you see these big power lines on, on big, big stands out in the, out in the country, those are hundreds of thousands of volts. So they're carrying very high voltage at a relatively low current. When, that, when those lines reach a city, then they will transform that hundreds of, uh, hundreds of thousands of volts down to something like maybe 25,000 volts or 30,000 volts. Those are electrical substations that you might see uh, on the side of the road on the outskirts of a city. So the big power lines with hundreds of thousands of volts go to transformers that trans at a substation that transform those, those hundreds of thousands of volts down to tens of thousands of volts. Uh, and then that tens of thousands of volts is what gets spread to your neighborhoods. So if you look at a power line uh, in front of your house, down your road, down your street, the, the bare wire at the very top actually has tens of thousands of volts on it. And that is too much for your house, however. <laughs> that is still just for transport. So tens of thousands of volts in those wires is just for transport. When to get to your house, you don't want tens of thousands of volts in your house. So there is a transformer by your house that will take those 30,000 or 25,000 volts in the, in the wire, in the primary wire going down your street and transform it down to something that you can use in your house, typically about uh, 220 volts or so. That's still a lot, but it's actually um, not as dangerous as 25,000 volts. So, um, and then the, uh, the current in your wire, however, will be higher since you, have a, since you have a lower voltage, you will have to, when you use that power, you'll use it at a higher current, which is why you have to have so many circuits in your house to, uh, to keep your wires from getting hot enough 
to burn out. So what goes on here? Uh, the power company generates electricity. They tr use a transformer to transform it up to very high voltages for transport. They can tra at very high voltages, they can transport it at low current. So high voltage, low current, that's for transport, but you can't use that high voltage. So for you to use it, you need a transformer that will lower the voltage, but raise the current. So there's still a trade-off there. You have to have a lot of different circuits in your house so that you don't have too much current on any one wire. So that is why we have alternating current because of power, uh, because of transformers that can transform between high voltage and low current and low voltage and high current. But the rule of the transformer is that power in equals power out or voltage in times current in equals voltage out times current out. Okay, let's do an exercise with that. A step-down transformer has an output of 12 volts and 0.5 amperes when connected to a 120 volt line. What current does a transformer draw from the line? Okay, so what you're given here is you're given the output voltage and the output current, and you're given the input voltage and the question is, what is the input current? So remember that a transformer, for the rule of a transformer is that power in equals power out, or voltage times current in equals voltage times current out. So you have 0 0.5 amperes on the low voltage side. What is the current on the high voltage side? Go ahead and work that out. So pause, work it out. And when you have an answer, hit play again and I will work through it with you. Okay, here's our transformer. We have 120 volts in and 12 volts out and 0 0.5 amperes out. Remember that our rule for a transformer is voltage in times current in equals voltage out times current out. Or if I want to get current in, then I'll divide by voltage in. I have to divide both sides by voltage in. That cancels out voltage in over here. And current in is equal to voltage out over voltage in times current out. Our current in is voltage out, 12 volts uh, times current out, or 0 0.5 amperes, divided by voltage in, or 120 volts. My volts cancel out, so my current in, my only unit left is amperes, and my number is, well this is 12 divided by 120 is 1 tenth, and 1 tenth of 0 0.5 is 0 0.05 amperes. So the correct answer is you have 0 0.5 amperes coming out, you must have had 0 0.05 amperes going in. Here's your last question. Electrical power companies step up the voltage of generated power for transmission across the country because higher voltage A means more power is transmitted, B reduces the current, which increases the resistance, C means less power is transmitted, or D reduces the current, which lowers the energy loss to resistance. Okay, think about this, read through those answers, uh, come down on a definite answer, pause, and then when you're ready for, to hear the correct answer, hit play again.
The correct answer is D. Electrical power companies step up the voltage of generated power for transmission across the country because higher voltage reduces the current and reducing the current lowers the energy loss to resistance. So they can transport the power with less loss if they transport it at high voltage and low current. So that is the whole reason why we have alternating current in the United States. It's for efficiency of transmission. And that is uh, the end of this lesson. We're actually finished with electricity. In our next and final lesson, we're going to talk about magnetism. Until then, think science.